If we have the feeling now it's time to press, if we see the triggers and there are triggers like in, in, in every team, if we see the shirt number, if we see a bouncing ball, if the ball is sloppy, then we go out of the formation and then we're going to press them hard and high and with all we got. For us in the Champions League, we had a very good campaign and going through the group of death, um, then facing PSV Eindhoven in the round of 16, facing Atletico Madrid in the round of eight, and then we made it to the semifinals facing PSG. And this is what we're going to talk today, how we managed to play them twice in six days time with the Bundesliga match in between. And I'm really looking forward to give you some more details about it. Going to the semi-finals um, against Paris, it's it's not easy playing them in, in 180 minutes with that quality that they had. Uh, we knew that uh, it's going to be very difficult. In the in the games against PSV Eindhoven and Atletico Madrid, it was a bit different for us because we played the first leg away from home. And we knew that we're going to break it down to one game and that we're going to create a special night in Dortmund. But now, first game was played in Dortmund. And uh, it was a special night. We know that we're going to get the advantage of our home crowd. The yellow wall is going to give us a good support if we give them a good game. Always is the main target if you play two games against a team that you take the lead before the second game kicks off. So um, to, to get into the situation that a draw in a second game is enough to go to the, to the next round. But again, if you have the feeling that you can score the second or the third goal, you're going to use it to get in a better, better position. But not to get carried away playing against the team that was made to win the Champions League. We've been on a road to, to fulfill our dreams. And this is something a mission can be accomplished or can, be, or can fail. A dream, you fight for that. And you fight until it gets fulfilled or you keep, keep fighting. We watched, of course, many, many of the games in the, in the French League, in the Champions League, and also we analyzed the games that we already faced against them, and we knew that they are capable to play in different systems. So the lineup of PSG was with Donnarumma in goal, with Marquinhos and Lucas Hernandez, two very experienced center backs, especially in this competition, very experienced. On the left-hand side, uh, Mendes. On the right-hand side, Ashraf Hakimi, a former player of us, of BVB. In midfield, they choose three players with Vitinha as a holding holding six, as a holding mid, and then with Fabian Ruiz and Zay Emery as two number eights. Up front, they choose to play with three players. On, on the left-hand side, they start with Barcola. On the right-hand side, they start with Usman Dembele, also former player of, of Borussia Dortmund. And up front with Kylian Mbappé, they choose a very mobile number nine, very flexible, very dynamic, very quick, changing positions all the time. And this is the lineup that they choose, but we knew that from this lineup, they like to, to, to swap into a build-up with three. They also been capable to play with two strikers and more like in a four, two, two, two shape that they used, for example, against Barcelona and San Sebastian, two teams that play in a similar system like we do. So we've been looking um, for formation that suits all of that, that, that can defend and attack against whatever they're going to do if they play with four at the back, three at the back, and also with two or one striker up front. We started in a 4-2-3-1 shape with Gregor Kobel in goal, Mats Hummels and Nico Schlotterbeck as two center, center backs. Then on the right-hand side, as a right back, we had Julian Riasson and Ian Matson on the left-hand side as a left-back. The two holding mids been Emre Can on the left side and Marcel Zabitzer on the right side. As a number 10, we started with Julian Brandt on the right wing. Jaden Sancho started on the left wing. It was Karim Adeyemi. And up front, we started with Niklas Füllkrug. Of course, we want to stick to our principles, but we also need to respect the opposition and also the occasion playing the semifinals of the of the Champions League. So we choose, for example, two holding mids that we know that also we can always swap in our positions that Emre Can is playing as a number six and Marcel Zabitza just pop up 
and play in a 4-1-4-1 shape defensive wise in the, in the offense we always wanted to create a 4-3-3 um, and for example we knew uh, about the pace of Ashraf Hakimi and the way that he likes to to bump up and the link up play with Usman Dembele and we needed a quick and mobile player on this position. So we choose Karim Adeyemi on this position, not only because he did really well in, in the games against Atletico Madrid, it was also something that we know that we need to respect on the one hand, um, that they always like to create an overload on that side. But on the other hand, it also opens spaces for us, what, the, what we would like to use, especially with Karim and his pace. And knowing that they like to, to take a risk on both wings, we always wanted uh, Jaden Sancho on the right hand side to, to be in a 1v1 situation. Talking about out of possession, um, we always start to talk about a setup when they have a goal kick. So this is how they line up in a 4-3-3. We always change our formation on, on high pressing on goal kicks. So we always like to be plus one at the back. So we have two center backs covering one striker. We have our fullbacks in the inside position of their wingers. Our goalie is also a bit higher. Then we always have our holding mid. In this case, it was Emre Can, who is in front of our back four. Then we have one player. It was Marcel Zabitza, our number eight, who, who pushed up and taking care of the opposition number, number six. In this case, it was Vitinha. Then we have two players in a 50-50 positions with our wingers. So it was Karim Adeyemi in a 50-50 position. And on that side, it was Jaden Sancho in a 50-50 position. And then we have our two strikers. So we defend in a 4-1-3-2 formation on goal kicks. And why we start with that? Because this is something that we want to create also on high pressing situations. And now it's just one of the principles um, nowadays, many teams and also PSG did it this way. Um, so there are two options. One option is that they start with the ball centrally with the goalie and they start like this with a short, simple pass to one of the center backs. Or the second option is that, that the goalie throws the ball to one of the center backs and they start it this way. So with a short pass to the goalie to create a plus one situation. This is what nowadays many, many teams are doing and we have different principles on that. So that means if the ball is centrally and we know that the ball has to go wide, this is where our two strikers stay also closer to the holding mid. We drop a bit with our player, in this case Marcel Zabitza, and we are more in this position. And these two players are covering the easy pass to the, to the holding mid so that we know that we want to guide the ball outside. So for example, it was always like this. If the goalie is a right-footed player like Donnarumma, that means Julian Brandt is on the left-hand side because he's our trigger who likes to press first. He has a good timing, a good pace, and he likes to pl put players under pressure. So in this case, if the first ball is played to this direction, we want Niklas Füllkrug to cut the pitch for us. We're gonna step in, we're gonna step in, we're gonna wait until the ball is played here. So we're gonna try to force this easy ball this way and then we all go and we all press. And knowing, for example, that now they like to bump up with Barcola and Mbappé to have a run in behind and one of the holding, holding mids is bumping to one side and dropping to one side, we need our holding mid, the plus one player, to support us on the wing and to force them to stay in this corridor. And this is what we want to achieve, that they're going to stay in this corridor if the ball starts with the goalie played to one of the center backs. The other situation is if the ball, if the ball is not starting with the goalie, if the ball in the start is one of, with one of the center backs, then it's a bit different. Then we're going to stay a bit more like this. So we're gonna cover the space with our right striker who's on the line of the ball. Then we're gonna bump up a bit more and push up a bit more with our uh, number 10, in this case, Marcel Zabitza, and Julian Brandt is coming from this side. What we want, we want to attack the strong foot of the goalie. So that means if the ball is played, this is the trigger and this is the signal for us that we need to sprint. And now we are sprinting from this side. So to force them 
to make because he will always, this is natural for a right footed, he will always leave the ball to get to his right foot. So this is where we want to increase the pressure on the right foot, knowing that now usually the, the ball is going to be played into this direction, where we're going to win the 2v1 situation for sure with, with, with the quality in the air of Nico Schlotterbeck and Mats Hummels against um, Kylian Mbappé, or it's going to be now a diagonal ball with the right foot from this position where we know Barcola is going to be the target player. So these are the two situations that we want to create on goal kicks and how we want to press them in a high pressing situation. Also, from, from it's going to be the same principles from, from open play. From open play, once we force them to play back passes to the goalie and everything stays the same if the ball is with the goalie and it's just a bit higher. But if we press them high, these are the positions and these are the patterns that we would like to see from our players once we press them high. We know uh, Paris is a team that not only in the Champions League, especially in the, in the domestic league, they like to have a lot of ball possession and they are really calm and, and feel very comfortable on the ball with Lucas Hernandez and Marquinhos. They always like to pass it. They always like to travel with the ball. If they don't have the pressure, they will always find the space in behind. And this is something that we need to take care of. But um, like we always do, what we want, we have our principles. So the first principle is to close the center first. So everything that we do is to try to make the ball go wide into corridors next to the box where we can split the pitch and we can create um, a situation that we don't have to cover the full, full width, the full size of the pitch and we decide where they continue to play. It always depends a bit on the opposition. So that means if they have three players in midfield, positioned like this, we always like to be very close to them, to close these this positions first, to stop these easy passes in between the lines, to, 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 to make it very hard for them to find the pockets. And sometimes they like to have two number six with, with Emery close to Vitinha. And that means that Emre Can, Julian Brandt and Marcel Zabitza, they're going to position this way so that we always ready to be in a one v one situations and we don't give them the opportunity to create plus one situations in a regular build up play. So this is the first rule. Then the second thing is it also depends a bit on the opposition. So that means if they build up like this and we are in a, let's say, four, two, three, one situation, this is how they basically played in both games against us. And they have two narrow and close center backs. Now, what we want is we're going to stop them traveling with the ball. Once the ball is played, we want our striker, again, similar like on goal kicks, to cut the pitch for us and force them to play wide. So we need our wingers to stay inside first. So don't, don't give them this opportunity to pass. Be very close on, on our toes here so that they don't get the opportunity to turn here, that they feel the pressure straight away here. We need to be very aggressive once the ball is played here. We need our center backs to give them straightaway pressure from all directions. We're going to stay with our wingers as long as possible inside and wait until the ball is played and just make sure that our run is shorter than the way of the ball. We can't run as fast as the ball, so we have to make sure that the distance to the opposition is closer than the ball is traveling. So this is the first case in the first scenario. And then, of course, if the ball is played, and we need our number 10, in this case um, Julian Brandt, to support our striker, that we cover that space, that we are also ready to bomb up here. And if we have the feeling now it's time to press, if we see the triggers, and there are triggers like in, in, in every team, if we see the shirt number, if we see a bouncing ball, if the ball is sloppy, then we go out of the formation and then we're going to press them hard and high and with all we got. And then we don't want only one duel, we need a second, a third, a fourth duel as we're going to chase them um, until we get the ball. But it's a bit different, different if we go back into the, to the, the, to the formation and we see them again in a 4-3-3. But the center backs are not close to each other. They are very wide. And this is what's causing problems for the striker to cover the full width. So once he's here, and even if he stops this pass, they're going to use the goalie to do it again. And that's impossible for one striker to, to support. 
Of course, many teams like it this way, to swap to a 4-4-2, to leave the holding mid of the opposition unmarked, and then you have more more options and more people around to, to press. But on, with the quality of Vitinha, they're going to find him. Is it with the goalie or they're going to find it with two passes? So one, two. And this is very difficult for our two strikers to cover. So we choose for that game. And this is what we started with, for example, against PSV Eindhoven, where, where it was a bit similar in style of play of the center backs. If they are like this and they start with very wide center backs, then we're going to stay and stick to our principles on the side of the ball. But on the other side, on, on, uh, away from the ball, again, our striker, he's going to stop Marquinhos, in this case, to travel with the ball. We are on our toes, what we said, closing the inner line to, to defend these long balls. But once this ball is played, we're going to step up a bit with our winger on the, on, the, on the far side, on our weak side, because we all shuffle over and give them the feeling that they can pass it to the, to the center back. And then we're going to attack them from the blind side so that they can't find the full back with one pass. So this is not allowed. So this is what we need to stop. So we create a shadow with our winger. So if they want to pass it, then they just have to pass it again with two passes. One pass here where we can put them under pressure. And the second pass allows us to shuffle over and to put pressure with our fullbacks to come over with all the other players and then to force them to play again in the corridor that we like them to be. And this is something that, that is really important for our players to find out, okay, now the center backs are close. Now it's a it's, it's the moment for our striker to cut the pitch for us, to guide the ball outside, or for our wingers on the far side to be always online, to see now it's needed that I push up and put the opposition under pressure. This worked out really well in the beginning of the game. So we, we only conceded uh, a few shots from distance, but we kept them away from the goal very well. So what they did, they always try to, to, to adapt also to, to, to us. Um, and so they started to build up with three, with Lucas Hernandez inside, with Mendes as a left in the back three, with Marquinhos right in the back three. Uh, Hakimi pushed up, Barcola was on one side, and Usman Dembele came inside into this pocket, and Fabian Ruiz was here in this pocket. Vitinha and Zay Emery, they played like like two holding mids, and this is what they, 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 they did. And this is also something that we like to do in, in ball possession, to build up with three, four, two, one. And this caused us many problems um, in terms of getting control of Vitinha. And what we planned before the game was that we then gonna swap to a 4-1-4-1. And that's the reason why we started with Zabitza on the right side and Emre on the left side. So it was just Emre stepping inside and Marcel Zabitza pushing up a bit. In the high and in the mid block, we always try to start from a 50-50 position. That our positioning is always covering not one player, it's always covering two players. So we are ready to attack here, we are ready to attack here, we are ready to attack here, we are ready to attack here. That we are always in a position where we can at least cover two players. If we go from a high block to a mid block, it stays like this if we go to a low block then we're going to increase the pressure and go closer in to, to the man who's the most dangerous to score a goal. The problems that we faced here was like, again, our trigger was the number nine. We want to cover the, the, the pockets with our wingers coming inside to, to get these gaps as close as possible. But again, we also want to increase the pressure with them. The, the problem that we had was not only controlling Vitinha by pushing up, Always Fabian Ruiz, he, he was really, really good, especially in the first game, that he always splitted our attention. So our holding mid never knew, should, should I go or should the center back mark him now? And once he found out that the holding mid was there, he was just getting into this space. So he was really, really good in finding the free space. And this is where we really struggled in the first game. And this is also something that we talked to at halftime. And this is something that we tried to adapt um, in the second half and also in the second leg.
so defending in a deep block against PSG um, also is, is, is um, something that needs not only a good focus and a good activity, you also need a good communication of the players because we know Ashraf Hakimi and Usman Dembele with a great link-up play, so they can create 2v2 situation on one side, they can put Usman Dembele inside and Ashraf just on, on, on the side to create 1v1s against your winger or against your fullback or this is what they really like and we're really good at to play these kind of one-twos and then Ashraf gets into this position and all he's looking for is this square pass or this cutback to, to um, Fabian Ruiz or Usman Dembele or whoever is in this position and where they're really, really good at. So what we knew is that, again, we need to put them under pressure everywhere on the pitch. We need to be on, on, on our toes and, and just make them playing back passes to push up again or to force them to make unforced errors and to use, of course, if they're playing this way with, with, with the players Ashraf Hakimi and Usman Dembele very high on the pitch. We know this is a, a space where we need to be ready to use it um, on counter-attacks. But what was the challenge? Not only to stop crosses in here, it was also a challenge that we knew that Fabian Ruiz is having a great late run inside the box. So they are using the situation that you try to, to, to create a plus one situation on the wing, where you play three against two against Usman Dembele and Ashraf Hakimi. So for example, now, we have Marcel Zabitza, Julian Brandt, Emre Can, everywhere close to the ball. Everybody is focused on the ball and then they just play one back pass to Marquinhos and with the first touch he sends in the cross and they're going to have a late run with Fabian Ruiz inside the box. And this is where they caused us, especially in the first 10 minutes of the second half, they caused us many, many problems and this is where we um, analyzed it not only before the game, also at halftime and also before the second game to cover this space and to leave these gaps as close as possible, to be man marking as closer the ball went to the byline, we need to be closer to the opposition. And then again, ready if they pass it back to push up, to put them in the offside position. Is it two steps, two steps, but this can be the, the detail that brings us to the final if we are ready to make these two steps up front to send him in an offside position, if we are ready to close these gaps that they can't explore in between us, if we are ready that we are not only facing the ball, that we also always see the opposition player in our back, and if we are ready to defend as a team, as a unit, and if we are ready to win the ball, to protect the ball, to set the ball, and to explore these areas, then we're going to be very dangerous.